Thank you very much, Mr. Kulak. Our next speaker is uh, Mr. Marty Pips, uh, owner of Old Dominion Hemp, which he started in 2015. He's also serving as the Central Virginia Regional Director for the Virginia Industrial Hemp Coalition since 2013. Uh, the title of his presentation is Industrial Hemp for Animal Bedding. Everybody. I, uh, I appreciate everybody being here today. Um, when I got involved with hemp a few years ago, uh, there was about six people in the room. So uh, we can say that in the last four years, uh, to see the uh, prominent faces and supporters, uh, we've come a long way. Um, I want to thank uh, Virginia State University, Dr. Mercy staff, and all the attendants here. Uh, I'm very honored to be a speaker, and when I was asked to be a speaker, I thought to myself, what could I potentially leave the audience with that would uh, cover the education and um, the, the, describe the need that we have for this hemp industry? So I started thinking, you know, what do we know? Uh, what do we not know? What do we think we know but we're wrong about? And uh, those are three questions that uh, I think I'm going to touch base on, and then I'm sort of going to go into uh, what my company does. Um, so some of the things that we do know, uh, this is an uphill battle. Um, prohibition has existed for 80 years. Uh, is there anybody in this room that's over 80 years old? One person. So one person uh, was alive when hemp was uh, last grown. So that means that we have generations and generations of people that need to be re-educated. And the reason I say re-education is because this is not a new crop. This is nothing new to Virginia. It has just been taken away from us for 80-some years. It's time for us to return back to what we need and what we know will grow here in Virginia, and that's hemp. Um, I happen to live in Charlottesville, Virginia, and it boggles my mind when I look up on the hill and I see Thomas Jefferson's house. I just think what he is looking down on and thinking, what happened? Uh, I said that this plant was the necessity for the wealth of this country, and yet you have abolished it. So we're going back to forefathers um, that presented this crop to our country. Um, farmers had to grow hemp to pay taxes. These are, these are facts. This is how important this industry was to our country and, and to our nation. Uh, it helped us through uh, world wars. So hemp is facing an, an uphill battle. Like I said, 80 years of, of prohibition is, is a, long, it's a big battle to overcome. Um, another thing that I, I have to make out, and this is just going to be my, my light moment, is you cannot smoke industrial hemp. <laughs> Please try it. <laughs> By all means, if you want to dry it up, put it in some rolling papers and do that, feel free. But it, it is not going to give you whatever desired effect you are looking for. Uh, hemp is an industrial crop. It's the same thing as corn, soy, tomatoes. Um, so for Hemp to be illegal, it's like telling me I can't grow cherry tomatoes. I love cherry tomatoes. I love hemp, but I can't grow it. So that's another thing I think that needs to be cleared. And we all are educated in this room to know that we cannot smoke it. But I will tell you, nine times out of ten, out of all the customers I come in contact with, whether joking or not, they ask me, can my horse get high off this? I tell them, listen, if, if you come into your stable and you see a horse rolling up hemp in the rolling paper, call me. We've got a different story, and we can really take this to a national level. Um, so I do say that, uh, you know, that's, that's the other thing I have to put out there. And three, if, if we don't grow this business here and this infrastructure here, we're going to lose out. Um, other states are destroying us in hemp production. Um, I mean, destroying us. You know, how many acres are we growing here at Virginia State? Ten? In total, in the state of Virginia, we may have a hundred acres. 
that's nothing compared to what I need for my business. Uh, you know, I just heard a gentleman say 900 acres. Uh, Washington's doing 2,000. Colorado's amped it up to 4,000 this year. So this is where it started. Why are we behind? Um, we need the people that are in this room to move forward and, and, and make the voices heard. Everybody can say they support him, but then what do you do about it? What are we doing? other than saying, I support this. It's going to take people in this room going to the representatives, the politicians, the people that can make decisions and speak for the people. That's what they're supposed to do anyway. So that's what we have to do. We have to sort of go to our representatives and tell them, listen, we need to change what's happening in D.C. Having this one, the Controlled Substance Act, it, it doesn't make any sense. This is an agricultural crop for farmers. This isn't some hippie in the woods growing marijuana. This is not what this is. This is an agricultural crop. This is a jobs bill. This is all the things that we are all here gathered for and want to push to the future. So we need our state representatives to go to D.C., demand that this get taken off the Controlled Substance Act. That is where we start. Um, we also need uh, our state agricultural departments to open up some of our uh, abilities to, to grow hemp. Let's expand some of our research product uh, projects. Um, you know, come find me, because I've been waving my flag over here for years looking for somebody to supply me with products so I don't have to import it. So again, state representatives, we need to build an infrastructure here. And we also, part of the re-education, um, why are we not teaching industrial hemp and in 4-H and the future farmers of America? I mean, these are agricultural crops that farmers have attended for hundreds of years. This is a crop that needs to be brought into those circles so we can teach our younger farmers that are coming up and uh, making a new generation so they know what to do. and, and We've lost 80 years, it's going to be hard for somebody's great-grandfather to tell him how to sow hemp in the ground. When he was starting, he was, it was getting taken away from him. So those are some of the things I just wanted to touch point on as far as where we are in the hemp industry and what we need. We need the education. We really need the support from our state representatives. We need people in this room to go to their uh, legislators and say, you know what? Why can't I have this? We need the farmers to be educated and know that if they do grow their crop, there is an end game. Um, there's people out there seeking this uh, more than you may know, and I'm one of those people. So that will introduce myself into my company. Um, I own Old Dominion Hemp. Uh, we supply animal bedding for uh, equines and small animals. Uh, I started the company. Uh, in 2015. Uh, when we started in 2015, I actually didn't even do a sale until April of 2016. So for the first nine months, I imported this product or found it where I could and gave it away to the uh, Retirement Thoroughbred Foundation, uh, Piedmont Search and Rescue, Mounted Division, uh, nonprofits basically. I wanted to find out if there was a market for this product. Well, we know they're using it in Europe. The, the Queen of England uses it for her horses. So we know that that market is established there. So I needed to find out, well, if I live in horse country, what better place to try it? Well, people loved it. And to the point I said, okay, now this is an opportunity to show farmers that there is a product end game. All I need them to do is grow it, put somebody in the middle that can process it, and I can sell this all day long. Um, it, it's being accepted. Um, education is needed, but that's part of my job in telling them, hey, this is a product. A lot of people go, hemp, oh, I thought that was rope. And when I tell them there's another 50,000 different uses for this product, they just stand back and look and say, well, I had no idea. Well, that means that there's not enough education out there for people to go and find and, and learn the things that they need to learn. So as I said, I started uh, selling to the public in April last year, 2016. We went to our four, first horse show. I brought 30 bags down to uh, the Chatham, North Carolina 
uh, Horror Center. And I thought, okay, here it is. What's going to happen? And as I said before, about well, 9 out of the 10 people that walked by said, oh, yeah, I used to do that in college. And, you know, can your horse smoke it? And, I, you know, and so I, I let that roll off. But honestly, in those instances, I find as educational opportunities. When somebody says that to me, I see it as an opportunity to educate them on the real benefits of hemp and why this is a better product for their animal. So when we sold, when we went to this horse show, I sold out. I could not believe it. I came home with an empty trailer and I thought, okay, I, I may be on to something. So I, I import product uh, from Europe, and that's how I'm getting it. And I was ordering one container about every three months. I'm selling three containers a month now. That's over 100,000 pounds of hemp herd. Last year, we could have taken all of the hemp grown in the United States, which is about 10,000 acres, and Old Dominion, my company, would have burned through it in about four months. So knowing that that is being said, there is a market. Old Dominion is creating that market. We are moving so much product, our projections for next year are 12 containers a, a month. Just to give you an idea of what one container holds, that's 33,000 pounds of hemp. We, we're using three of those a month now. So people are, are, are accepting this product. It's a better product. It's a healthier product. Um, you can grow it. You don't have to cut a tree down. It's not pine shavings. It's, it doesn't have the dust of straw. So our projections are really moving forward to the point to where I'm almost worried that I'm growing too fast, which most business people don't want to say, but it scares me because I'm thinking I'm going to get to a point where Europe is going to say, sorry, we don't have enough for you. Then what do I do? I'm already finding a, a problem where I have to wait three weeks for this to be shipped across the ocean to come to me. So imagine three containers coming in a month. Now we're moving to four. Can you imagine 12 of those? That's a lot of money that I'm using for importing. So this year, as I said, we our first year in real hard sales. We are already in July at $100,000 in sales. We will be at a quarter million dollars in sales by December. And if you want to break that down into containers, that's a quarter million dollars of product I'm importing from Europe that could be going into Virginia farmers into their hands. That I'm a Virginian. That's what I that's why I started this business. I saw a, a an opportunity to show them to get out in front of the horse, no pun intended, and say, look, we have a crop. You grow it. We'll sell it. The processing, I'm working on that, and now that I, I know some other gentlemen are closer to me, um, uh, two weeks ago I was in Nebraska, met with a gentleman that is trying to make the material that we sell. He's this close to doing it. And then the opportunity to duplicate that system and put them where Old Dominion potentially has those markets could be a great thing. Um, so not only are we showing the market, but we're working with farmers. We want, we want to go to farmers and say, can you grow for Old Dominion? We'll buy every every part of your crop. I, I don't, even though I'm just in the herd aspect of it, I know there's avenues for seed. I know there's avenues for fiber. So if I can go to a farmer and say, you got 10,000 acres? Here's, here's a contract, let's get this done. Here's the processing plant, this is where we go from here. We already have established the market. So all of these pieces are in the same room. All we have to do is fit the puzzle together, and, um, and I, I'm hoping that uh, this is the group that can do it, uh, because it is a fight, and you know it's an uphill battle. It's something that we've been fighting for for a long time, but as a company owner, as a Virginian, I'm telling you, this industry needs to happen here. The infrastructure needs to be here. If you've driven anywhere down the southern part of Virginia, there is nothing but fields, soy, corn, anywhere you see that stuff growing, hemp can be grown. And I'm telling you, Old Dominion Hemp needs it as a company. We need the product. I want it in my backyard. I don't want to have to go to Nebraska, Colorado, North Carolina, or Washington. 
I'm being courted by these states because they're growing more hemp and saying, hey, would you like it? Well, yeah, I would. But really, you know, at the end of the day, it'd be a lot easier if it was right here in Virginia. This is where it needs to be. If we have the market, which we've shown, we have the land, we have the, the universities, the capabilities, we have all of the pieces. We just have to put it all together. So, um, coming to a conclusion, uh, I will say that uh, I, I do appreciate everybody's time and effort. Um, I didn't really touch too much about our product. I can talk more about that and the benefits of that uh, if anybody would like to. I really felt that it was more important uh, to pinpoint that all the pieces are in this room right now. It, it is up to us to, to really cross the finish line. And uh, nobody else is going to do this for us. If we would have sat here and waited, nobody would be in this room. I wouldn't have a business. Jason Amatucci started the Virginia Industrial Hemp Coalition. He wouldn't be here. And then that's how I got started. And it was all an organization that said, hey, come check this out. I said, well, I'm not doing anything on Thursday, plus they have cold beer. So next thing you know, it's from that meeting, I left that meeting and I was, I have still to this day, I'm looking for the negative of hemp. I haven't found it. I left that meeting going, okay, well, I'm going to find out why this won't work. And I cannot figure out why, why it will not work. All we need is the pieces to be put together because the industry is there. Uh, outside of betting, which is just one sample, I mean, in my field alone, this could potentially be a billion dollar business. Any animal that needs betting, hemp is the best thing for it. It's more absorbent, it's healthier, it's low dust, it has all of the benefits that you would want for your pet, for your animal, uh, for whatever your livelihood is. So this is something that can replace pine. It can really help save the planet. And the best part about it is, is you can put it back into the ground. You know, once a horse uses this product, we have uh, large farms that are spreading this back into their fields because it doesn't have the acidity that pine shavings have. It's not burning up grass. It's going right back into the ground. And the only thing that I've found that uh, biodegrades faster than hemp is newspaper. And if anybody has any animals in here, they probably know what I'm talking about. Newspaper is not fun to bet on. It's, it gets mushy, nasty. So hemp is a healthier and a better alternative. So again, thank you guys. Uh, Marty Phipps, Old Dominion. If anybody has any questions, I will surely be here. Gentlemen here. Two questions. Uh, what's the difference between your product and uh, the drug? And what, how does it compare with the uh, uh, price of straw for the Sure. So when you when you say the my product versus the the drug, what, I mean the one that you would smoke. Uh, oh, I, I don't. I wouldn't. The one that you, the one that you smoke. The difference between it? Yeah. Sure. Well, hemp is an industrial crop where marijuana is is not. Um, that is more. <laughs> they are related, but the, the genealogy is different. I think if I was to say this correctly, they're cousins. Um, so for some of the uh, uh, pay grades above me in here could probably attest to that, but they are different. They, they do grow in different spots. Um, one of the things that I think is, is poignant to say that if we have a marijuana grower here and a hemp grower here, this marijuana grower, he just doesn't want to be near this guy. He doesn't because this is going to cross-pollinate his product. So over here, this guy wants high THC. Over here, we've been given a limitation of 0.3, so we want absolutely zero. So those are the differences. Where one is an industrial crop, the other can be used for medicinal and recreational purposes. Uh, and there are medicinal aspects to hemp. Uh, CBD, as, as some of the other people have said, have been uh, shown to be great for uh, joint uh, pain alleviation and stuff like that. But um, we do sort of separate our, ourselves from from the other guys because there's a stigma about that and um, you know when people see me driving down the road I had my father uh, one day we we're going to a large horse phone we're going down the road a bunch of guys in a car pull up Woo! And, you know my dad goes I, I don't think they know what you what you have in the truck <laughs> which is true and, and then that is some of the re-education that we need um, cannabis is the umbrella of it all. 
but hemp and marijuana are two different things. Okay, from the uh, small farmer's point of view, um, right now, the only thing I'm preparing is large acreage. Say uh, 10 small farmers get together and grow, the, grow this product. And there's no doubt all 10 farmers are not going to grow the same quality. Sure. So when you put it together, will that hinder you from buying it? No, and I think as more as the universities do research on this product, we're going to know specifically what strains that we need to grow. And we want to be able to have a dual crop, meaning that if you grow the crop, we want you to grow it for the fiber and potentially the seed. So hemp has the potential for a three-tier financial back end, if you will. You can harvest the seed. We know that we can utilize the seed for food, oils, and all the good stuff, makeups. We can utilize the fibers for t-shirts, uh, car parts. We can utilize the herd for cellulose and bedding. So this plant is not just like corn. You grow the corn, take that off, you may use the silage for feedage. This plant, there's three potential things that you could harvest off of it. Not saying that each strand will give you that quality where the herd on this may be not as good as this. So I think as we work together with farmers and the universities, we'll find specifically what strains we need to be grown that are going to be healthy for the fiber and the herd. Um, so the more research that's done and the more we can open this up, I think we'll find those avenues. And to be able to basically go to the farmer and say, this is the seed that we need you to grow. This is how we need you to harvest it. This is how we need you to bale it. And then that way we send it to a processor. He does his job. He puts it in a bag. We do our job. Thank you, guys.